Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. We certainly do thank and praise the Lord for his grace and his mercy, his love and his kindness that he has shown toward us. Truly, this is the day that the Lord has made, and let us rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, this is the district. It is good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. As the Bishop Frank L. Quinn uh, from Christian Ministries at the Apostolic Faith Church and getting ready to start our Bible study on today. Uh, we want you to tune in and to share uh, this Bible study uh, so that others can uh, partake and benefit of the word of the Lord uh, that is coming to you live from Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church. Truly, I am excited about what God is doing for his people and through his people. I'm excited about what the Lord has uh, literally been dealing with our hearts and our minds about in contrast to uh, getting rooted and grounded in him, to settling ourselves in him. Uh, the scripture says, in him we live and in him we move and in him we have our being. And it's certainly a, a, a great honor, a great honor, uh, especially in these times, um, to be connected with the Lord Jesus. Uh, I cannot think of anyone else that I'd rather be connected to in these times because Jesus, the Bible describes him as a sure foundation, as a solid rock, as an anchor. And he is our good shepherd that uh, layeth his life down for the sheep and he is our resurrection he's our joy he's our peace the bible describes him as that manna that came down from heaven so it is good he's that rock uh, that water uh, that rock that rolled through babylon hallelujah in the weary land he's that rock that giveth forth water giveth forth that which is life uh, to all those that trust in him. So we certainly do thank God uh, for today. And as we get ready to move into our Bible study, uh, as those begin to come on the air, we certainly do uh, want to go before the Lord in prayer. And we want to remember men and women and children everywhere that the Lord himself will save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And we certainly do thank God for Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st Street. Uh, we thank God that God has really blessed us and given us all that we need. The scripture says, he shall supply all of your needs according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. And we certainly do thank the Lord that he has truly and he will continually truly to supply every need. Uh, we want to uh, pray uh, for the world, pray for men and women and children everywhere, that the Lord will save and add to the church daily such as should be saved. And let us pray for the Bible study on tonight, that something be said and done to inspire us, to encourage our hearts, that we may uh, glean something from the Lord, especially in these times of need. Uh, let every heart pray. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you, Lord. We just say thank you. We praise you, Lord, for your goodness and your mercy, your love and your kindness. We thank you, Lord, for how you've literally blessed us and kept us even into this very hour. Lord, there is none like you in all the earth. The heavens and the earth declare it thy glory. And now, Lord, we pray that you take charge of this service on today. Remember the backsliders. Remember those that need healing, deliverance, and even remember the strong, that they will remain strong and rooted and grounded in thee. And Father, we thank you and praise you, sent forth your anointing, grant the door of utterance, and we thank you and praise you, give you glory and honor in the precious and the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' name, amen and amen, amen. It's certainly good to be in the house of the Lord. It's certainly good uh, to be able to draw nigh unto the Lord. 
The scripture says if we draw nigh to him, he'll draw nigh to us. And uh, that's, that's how I know that uh, God is real. Because when I draw nigh to him, uh, as the song says, I can feel him in my hands. I can feel him in my feet. I can feel the Lord all over me. He truly does draw closer to you. Even when I was dead in trespasses and sin and, and didn't really uh, understand the Lord, but just knew to pray because that's what people do when they're in trouble. And even when I was dead in those trespasses and sin and began to ask God sincerely for help, I could feel his presence. When I asked God to strengthen me and, and save me and deliver me, I could feel his comforting spirit in his presence. So God is faithful. He's faithful to the just and the unjust. He's faithful because God wants all to come to repentance and, and to receive the knowledge of the truth. He wants everyone to come to salvation. And we receive that salvation through Jesus Christ. So we certainly thank the Lord that we have a savior and his name is Jesus. And he's the only savior of the world. So as we get ready to get into our Bible study on tonight, uh, we're going to come out of the book of Matthew chapter number five. And I want to deal uh, with the specifically uh, the Beatitudes. So we'll be beginning at uh, verse number one, Matthew chapter five and verse number one. And primarily, uh, the Beatitudes, it, it's a pronouncement to Jesus' disciples concerning the nature of life in the kingdom of heaven. It, it really, really gives us what we should come to understand as true faith. And what I mean by that is, is that um, uh, when we think of the kingdom of heaven, we should think of the kingdom of heaven as the 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 means and the vehicle of salvation. When, when Jesus, after he came out of the wilderness, he began to preach and his, his message was, repent ye for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And the kingdom of heaven, if we see it as, as a representation of salvation, of a representation of deliverance, we would get the true meaning of the kingdom of heaven. Uh, the Bible tells us that uh, Jesus taught us that the kingdom of heaven is within you. And that represents um, God's power, God's authority, and God's restoration. And, and, and it, it looks toward uh, one that is, 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 is saved, delivered, set free. Anybody and everybody that's operating in the kingdom of heaven through Jesus Christ is, is delivered, is set free, is saved. Uh, the scripture says, uh, seek ye first the kingdom of God in Matthew chapter number six, verse 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these other things shall be added unto you. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is not uh, about merely about uh, possessions. Notice the definition of what Jesus said we should seek. Uh, the kingdom and his righteousness, which all represents salvation and deliverance. We should not uh, put our hearts and our minds to seek after riches, to seek after gold, to seek after position. We should seek the kingdom. And when you seek the kingdom, it represents deliverance. It represents elevation. It represents power. It represents all that God is through Christ Jesus, which is salvation. So um, when, when Jesus talked about that, and I'm going to uh, move on quickly because I, I don't want to get stuck there, uh, but I wanted uh, to make that very clear. And then also, too, when we think about... Uh, the, the Beatitudes, Jesus also encouraged his followers with two metaphors. He told them that he wanted them to be salt, and he told them that he wanted them to be light. Salt represents uh, a preservative, and it also represents influence. 
So Jesus was telling his disciples, uh, you should, he's going to preserve you and you should also influence others. Amen. You should also influence others. And then he talked about ye shall be light and light illuminates, light opens up. And uh, when we operate by faith and we walk by faith and not by sight, and we walk in the light of the word of God. Uh, it, the Bible says the path of a just man gets brighter and brighter unto a perfect day. So we should be uh, going from uh, revelation to revelation to deeper wisdom and deeper knowledge into the word of God. And, and then we should be manifesting that, uh, the, the revelation and the understanding as, as the Lord has given unto us as we continue day after day. Uh, just to give you an illustration of what I mean is, uh, the Bible says that in the book of uh, 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 Hebrews, it says in that first chapter that God at sundry times and in diverse manners, he spoke unto us by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken unto us by his son, who is Jesus Christ, who's the heir of all things. But my point in bringing that out is, is that revelation comes from God and God renews and transforms. At first, he dealt with the prophets and he gave them revelation into his son, Jesus. And then uh, he said, when Jesus came on the, son, on the scene, he, Jesus gave a deeper revelation into what? Into what the prophets had said. Uh, he gave a deeper revelation into um, the, the meaning and the understanding of the word of God. And that's what Jesus did here in the, uh, the Sermon of the Mount, we call it. Uh, uh, Matthew 5, 6, and 7. It's literally a, a, a deeper understanding of, of the book of Deuteronomy, what Moses taught as far as the law. It's a greater understanding of the law. And, and Jesus is bringing that out to wherein um, we should grasp it, his teachings and his doctrine, so that we can live by it. And the more you apply this word to your daily living, the deeper in knowledge, the deeper in wisdom, and the deeper in revelation you will receive as you walk in the light. Hallelujah, you will see the light. Now, I want to say this as well, that, that uh, oftentimes when we deal with faith, when we deal with faith, the Bible says walk by faith and not by sight. Um, um, and, and I'm going to use America as, 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 a, um, as a, an example. Uh, uh, Americans, uh, we don't face uh, real persecution in the sense that it comes down to life and death. Uh, when the Bible talks about faith, and if you just read the majority of scriptures that deal with faith in the Bible, it talks about life and death. It deals with life and death. When you go to even the book of Hebrews, chapter number 11, and it talks about, we call that the Hall of Fame saints. It talks about Abraham, and then, and then it talks about Moses, and it talks about uh, 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 a lot of uh, uh, Sarah and things like that. But when you enter into the, uh, the, the final parts of that book of Hebrews, it talks about those that walk by faith that were sawn asunder, that uh, uh, said that they would uh, rather receive death than to, to, to uh, deny Jesus or deny the Lord. And that's the kind of faith that we're living in today. We have to elevate our faith and then get it out of name it and claim it uh, kind of faith. Uh, God will give you that if you desire that. But that's not the true type of faith that he's talking about. He's talking about a faith that will, will that you will, you are willing to literally give your life, hallelujah, for this walk. You are really, you are persuaded that nothing shall separate you from the love of God, 
which is in Christ Jesus. And we have to, uh, as the book of Hebrews says, maybe I should be studying the book of Hebrews. It says we got to leave the principles of the doctrine, the laying on of hands and repentance from dead work and gone to perfection. Hallelujah. And that's what we should be working on. That's what we should be living on, to go after the deep things of God. Don't just be a surface dweller. Hallelujah. Go after the deep things of God. Uh, get yourself rooted and grounded and be willing, hallelujah, to lay your life down. Thank you, Lord. Be willing to give all that you have to follow after Jesus. And that's the kind of faith that Moses, uh, that, that Paul talked about. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. And the life that I now live in this flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Notice what he said, who died for me, gave his life for me. Thank you, Lord. And that's the kind of uh, 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 life we should be living. That's the kind of faith we should be enduring. And that's what uh, these Beatitudes teach us. It teaches us about a kingdom uh, that brings forth salvation. And it teaches us uh, that we should be willing to give up our lives to, to surrender all unto the Lord Jesus Christ that he might manifest his kingdom within us. Amen. So uh, I want to uh, look at then as we begin to look at Matthew chapter number five and verse number one. It says this is Jesus after he had came out of the wilderness and he had uh, dealt with all the temptations of the enemy and overcame each and every one. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life. Oh my God, I'm so proud of Jesus, I can't, I can't, I can't bear it. Hey, hey, hallelujah, he's an overcomer. Hallelujah, he's a deliverer. Hey, glory, he's our joy, he's our peace. Hallelujah, in the midst of the storm. And what I love about him is the fact that he shares his victory with us. Amen, he shares his glory with us. He shares his inheritance with us. Hallelujah. And he shares also, we don't like to talk about it much, his sufferings <laughs> with us. Because if we don't suffer with him, we won't reign with him. Hallelujah. But there's greater. There's greater. So we see here, uh, Matthew chapter number 5, the Bible says, And seeing the multitudes, uh, the, he went up into a mountain, and when he was set, uh, his disciples came uh, unto him. Now, uh, this is a, a reference. Uh, Jesus, if, well, maybe I should say it the other way. Moses was a type of Jesus. And this is a, a reference to, to Moses as, as they were giving out the law. And now that's why Jesus is set in this background because now he's getting ready to expound on the law. Um, and, and what that really means, and he's getting ready to talk about the righteousness of the law. Hey, glory. So, and, and it's deep because uh, the people weren't or, or were incapable of fulfilling the law apart from God. They needed God's help. And we are incapable of living holy fulfilling the righteous law of God without the help of Jesus. We need his help. And, and as we look here then, we see the multitude came, and notice, his disciples came unto him, those that were truly followers of him, those that desired to follow him came unto him. Those that desired to follow Jesus must come unto him. And notice, it took a position as he sat. And when he sat down, that was the, the, the position of those that taught. In Jewish days, people that uh, were, were teachers, they sat among the people and they began to teach. And that's what Jesus is doing. He's sitting among the people 
and he begins to teach. And notice verse 2, it says, and he opened his mouth and taught them saying, he taught them. I know we call this the Sermon on the Mount, but I like to think it of in my mind that it's a teaching of Jesus. Jesus is instructing his people. Thank you, Lord. He's instructing us uh, in the way of righteousness. He's instructing us uh, concerning the true nature of the life that you should live if you're connected to the kingdom. He's, he's teaching us and showing us that if you're going to be a follower of me, of Jesus, you have to incorporate these principles into your life. There's no two ways about it. Hey, thank you, Lord. Now notice then what he said. He said, uh, and he opened his mouth and he said, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Now, uh, I want to focus on that word blessed just for a moment. That word blessed, it, it means, it means, I want you to turn with me uh, to the book of Deuteronomy. Uh, Deuteronomy chapter 33. Blessed, uh, it means uh, 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 blessed, be blessed in, in, in a state of well-being because you're in a relationship with the Lord. And, and uh, it belongs to those who respond to Jesus' ministry. So blessedness deals with happiness in, in, in contrast to what the world tries to give you. Uh, the world tries to define happiness as, as riches and cars and land. But God defines happiness totally different from that. Thank you, Lord. And, and that, that happiness in us is in feeling fortunate, feeling blessed, and it comes from a divine sense of well-being, a divine sense of security in the Lord. So uh, I want you to go with me to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 33 and verse 29. And, and this is Moses as he begins to, he's literally about to die and he's, go, he's literally blessing Israel. And this is, this is uh, the, the exact meaning of, of being blessed and, and what blessedness truly is in the kingdom of God. It's not cars, it's not houses, it's not land, but it's literally dealing with one's security in Christ Jesus. If you are in Christ Jesus, you are truly blessed. Now notice what he says. Uh, this is, this is uh, Moses, verse 29. You should, if you get time, you should read that whole chapter. But verse 29, this is a definition of what, what Jesus was talking about, blessing. <laughs> he said, happy are thou, are thou, O Israel, who is like unto thee, O people saved by the Lord. That's a blessed person. You saved by the Lord. You're happy. Notice. Notice what it says. Saved by the Lord, the shield of thy help. The Lord is the shield of thy help. And who is the sword of thy excellence? And, and thine enemies shall be found liars unto thee, and thou shalt tread upon their high places. So this is what, this is what Moses is talking about and what Jesus was talking about, about being blessed. That, that your security, because God is your defender, he will defend you. Hallelujah. And he's already provided you salvation. And notice, uh, and he said that you will tread upon their high places. Uh, uh, telling you the high place were, were the places where uh, uh, the people set up their idols. That's where the people worshiped idol gods. And so this is a reference to uh, what Jesus said when he said, I've given you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and uh, all power over the enemy. That's security. That's blessedness. That, that's spiritual blessedness that you've got power uh, over the enemy. First of all, your salvation is secure. Uh, you don't have to worry. 
Hallelujah. That your, if your salvation is secure or not, because Jesus died and he rose again from the grave. And when he got up out of that grave, the Bible said he ascended up on high and he led captivity captive and he gave good gifts unto men. And how do you know Jesus reached his destination? Because he gave, he sent back the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Which the Bible says is a, is a down payment hallelujah, on your salvation. It's an assurance. Hallelujah. That you're saved. That you're sanctified. Hallelujah. That you're in Christ Jesus. My God. Hallelujah. So, so, so that's that assurance. That's that blessedness. And, and the blessedness also is your protection. He is your shield. He's your buckler. Hallelujah. He is your fortress so that the enemy has no power over you. Hallelujah. When you're in Christ Jesus, that's the blessedness. So that, that comes at a cost and a price that was paid by Jesus. And, and that comes at a cost and a price that's going to be paid by us if we are going to remain, if we are going to stay. We must line ourselves up with the teachings of Jesus. That's what he meant by, we talking about the kingdom of heaven belongs to you. Deliverance and salvation belongs to you. Now notice, uh, when Jesus uh, ended his teaching uh, uh, in the book of uh, Matthew chapter 7, he said, I'm going to show you a wise man uh, who built his house upon a rock. And basically, uh, above that, he said, he said, um, him that is wise, that heareth these sayings of mine. Amen? He heareth these sayings of mine. Those that are that hear the sayings of Jesus, let me get that real quick. Hallelujah. Matthew chapter number seven. Hallelujah. I feel the Holy Ghost. Thank you, Jesus. Matthew chapter number seven. Jesus said this. Uh, uh, verse, verse 24. He said, therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him to a wise man that built this house upon a rock. So, so the, the reason for me going to that particular scripture is that that represents the kingdom. And, and when you hear and obey and put in practice the teachings of the Lord because you are his disciple, you are blessed. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. You're happy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You walk in peace. Hallelujah. There's no torment. If death would come now, thank you, Lord. Those that are in Christ don't have to fear because he said, I am the resurrection. I am the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And he that liveth and believeth, Notice, he said, and he shall never die. Hallelujah, my God. That's security. Thank you. That's what blessedness means. It's security. So as we look here at the scriptures, and he said, and he opened his mouth, verse number two, Matthew chapter five, verse two, verse number three, and he said, uh, blessed are the poor in spirit, those that uh, see themselves in need. If you're going to be a part of the kingdom, uh, you've got to see yourself in need. Thank you, Lord. Jesus bless those that are in need. God blesses those that are in need. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. And if you see yourself in need, uh, you can come boldly to the throne of grace uh, and to find grace to help you in your time of need. Hey, glory, hallelujah, my God. So you got to see yourself destitute, not of your own strength, not of your own ability. Hallelujah, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. We need the Lord, hallelujah. So those that see themselves needing the Lord, he said the kingdom uh, uh, for, the, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. 
And that kingdom of heaven, here what Jesus is referring to, it's referring to salvation. It's referring to deliverance. It's referring to security, salvation, deliverance. Amen? Hallelujah. So notice then, verse number four. He said, blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Now, when the scripture says, blessed are they that mourn, they that mourn for sin. Uh, you see yourself in, as a sinner. You see yourself as a, as, a, as a transgressor. Thank you, Lord. If you see yourself as that and you mourn, you repent, you want to turn from, from all unrighteousness. You want to turn from all iniquity. Uh, notice, he said, they shall be comforted. And the reason why he used that word comforted, it, it symbolizes the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you mourn for sin, thank you, Lord, and, and, and you repent of all your sin, the Lord will send you a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, the paraclete that will walk beside you, that will strengthen you, that will give you what you need in your time of need of salvation. But you gotta mourn, you gotta weep for sin, you gotta weep, hallelujah, for, uh, uh, for Lord, take away my sinful life. Lord, cleanse me and purge me from all unrighteousness. Notice, uh, if we were to go to uh, St. John chapter, uh, uh, 1 John, I'm sorry, 1 John chapter number 5. This is beautiful. Thank you, Lord. The Lord just recently uh, revealed this to me. Uh, St. John, uh, 1 John, I'm sorry. 1 John, ah, come on, shut up. 1 John chapter number 5, and uh, notice, drop down with me to uh, uh, verse number 7. Notice what it says. It says, for there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. And these three are one, meaning that they're one in purpose. They're one in purpose. The Father is God, the Word is Jesus, and the Holy Ghost. They, they are one in purpose. Now notice, uh, what I'm after here is uh, verse number 8. And he says, and there are three that bear witness in the earth. The Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. Hallelujah. And and. Right there, uh, John is telling us of the elements of salvation that, that needs to be performed in your life in order for you to receive deliverance and, and that comfort that he's talking about. Notice, Jesus, when he was here on this earth, he, he was reigning as the comforter. But he said, I'm going to go away. If I don't go away, the comforter can't come. And the comforter or the Holy Ghost represents the ministry of Jesus upon this earth. Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He sent the Holy Ghost to manifest his will, hallelujah, within us. Thank you, Lord. And notice that what it operating with. He said, you got to be born of the water and of the spirit. Hallelujah. So, so these three agree as one. Uh, uh, the, you need the water, which represents the baptism, and the blood. The blood it represents redemption uh, for sins. So when you confess Jesus uh, as your Savior, the blood of Jesus cleanses you from your sins. And then you get baptized, not only in the water, but you get baptized in the Holy Ghost. Hey, hallelujah. And, and those three are operating here as, as one, uh, in agreement as one upon this earth. My God, you need to be born again of the water and of the
the spirit and the blood of Jesus. It cleanses you. Hallelujah. From all your filth. From all your sin. Hallelujah. By God. By God. Let's go back over. Thank you, Lord. Now notice. He said, blessed are they that mourn. Blessed are they that mourn. That are weeping and repenting for sin. Uh, for you shall be comforted. And that comfort comes through the Holy Ghost. Ah, uh, that shall be in you. Uh, God is going to comfort you with the Holy Ghost. Now notice then what he says. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. My God, blessed, the, the meek means those that have, 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 have strength to, to subdue themselves, uh, to walk in obedience. That's a meek person, not one that's walking around letting other people walk all over them. That's not what meek is. Meek is uh, being strong in the Lord <laughs> and in the power of his might, walking in his ways, uh, having self-control. Notice what he says. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit something. They shall inherit the earth. Amen. Meaning that he's going to give those that are meek dominion over this earth. Uh, the Bible talks about it. He says that we're going to receive a new heaven and a new earth. Oh, hallelujah, my God. And, and we're going to maintain a presence upon this earth. So if, what he's saying is, if, if you walk in obedience, subduing your flesh, Hallelujah. Living a holy lifestyle, you are going to receive that new heaven. You're going to receive, uh, uh, what I mean is, that new earth hallelujah, that he has prepared for you, that he has prepared for me. Hallelujah. These, this, the, the promises of God are yea and amen. Hallelujah, my God. The promises of the Lord are true and steadfast. That's why he told uh, Paul when he uh, sent him on his commission to, to preach. And he preached, told him that, you know, uh, uh, turn men from darkness to light, from the power of Satan unto God, so that they can receive repentance and remission of sins and an inheritance among them that are sanctified. When you control yourself, hallelujah, and not be like the world, Hey, hallelujah, the world, they, 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 they think that uh, uh, ruling over people, but Jesus said, those that are in leadership serve. Those are the ones that are going to be great in his kingdom. Those that follow after the word, those are the ones that are going to be great in his kingdom. Hey, hallelujah, and those, that is a part of our inheritance, my God, if we follow after him, if we remain humble, meaning if we remain steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know, your labor is not in vain. Now notice what he said, uh, verse number six, hallelujah, my God. He said, blessed are they that who would do hunger and thirst after righteousness, for they shall be filled. My God, how's your appetite? Oh, hallelujah. Are you hungry? Are you thirsty? Oh, hallelujah. When an individual gets saved, they should have a hunger for the things that be of God. The scripture literally means when it literally says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Amen. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. And that newness deals with my desire, my appetite. Hallelujah. I, when I was in the world, when I was under sin, the law of sin and death, I went after greedily those things that were, were, were uh, against righteousness. When I got born again, of the water and of the spirit. And my mind was being renewed by the, by, the, by the Holy Ghost. My God, my appetite changed. Your appetite should change. Hallelujah. And notice what Jesus said. He said, 
blessed, which means to, to be favored, to be fortunate, uh, to be secure. Hallelujah. Uh, are they that hunger and thirst after righteousness? You've got a hunger and thirst after what God calls right. Righteousness deals with right behavior. My God, you have to have it in your mind. Let me, let me just talk to you just for a moment. You've got to have it in your mind that you want to do what's right. Not half the time, but 100% of the time. You should want and desire to please God 100% of the time by doing what he requires. And when something comes up against you that is trying to gnaw you away from doing what God calls is right, you resist it steadfast, knowing that it won't be pleasing unto your Lord, knowing that you'll be beat with many stripes, hallelujah, knowing that not taking advantage of God's grace and mercy. Paul said, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? The Bible says, God forbid. Hallelujah. That's the attitude. Hallelujah. That's the mindset. That's the new creature. Hallelujah. All old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Walking in the new and living way. Hallelujah. Only, only one desire that I might please my God. Only one desire that I hear him say, well done, thy good and faithful servant. That's got to be your desire. That's got to be your hunger. That's got to be your appetite. Hallelujah. Lord, feed me. Hallelujah. Lord, feed my soul. Lord, feed my desire. Hallelujah, Lord, if there's anything in me that's not like you, Lord, take it out. That's the desire of a righteous man. That's the desire and hunger of a righteous woman. You want to be established. Like that tree that is planted by the rivers of water. You want to be established with that hunger and with that thirst after righteousness so that the Lord can open up your mind so that the Lord can give you what you need hallelujah so that you'll be able to endure that you'll be able to be steadfast so that you'll be able to maintain hallelujah in the name of Jesus now notice what he said he said blessed are they which do hunger and thirst that word do is a right now. Hallelujah. You got a hunger. You got a thirst. And your hunger and thirst is not after wine and spirits. Your hunger and thirst is after righteousness. My God, you want to please your God. You want to do what God calls right. Now notice what it says. For they shall be filled. <laughs> Hallelujah. If you got that kind of desire, God will fill you. Hallelujah, because I want to say this, and I can't stress this enough, that, that we should be, we literally, especially in these days and times, receiving a deeper revelation into the Lord, because we are at the last days, and, and, and uh, it's like, if you're a child, and, and you're in the Kindergarten, you got a small amount of understanding. As you progress uh, through uh, uh, high school and, 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 and then some enter into college, your knowledge and understanding should grow. You should be able to put concepts together. You should be able to think abstractly out, out the box. You should be able to put into play all of that learning and knowledge and understanding that you've received down through the years. And that's what God wants from us. God wants us to really know him by faith. And the only way to really know God by faith is through his word. Huh? 
you got to know him through his word. Notice the scripture. Faith cometh by hearing and that by the word of God. You got to hear God's word with the intent to obey, which increases your faith. And when your faith is increased, it literally, it literally equates to revelation. My God, when, when, when you understand what faith is, faith is really a manifestation of the revealed will of God. And when you walk by faith, you're walking by a deeper understanding of God's revealed will. Um, and it doesn't matter what you see, because all you see is what God is showing you by faith. Hallelujah. And that's through revelation. Hallelujah, my God. So notice what he says then. He said, you shall be filled. Notice, he says, blessed are the merciful. Uh, you're going to, if you do these things, you're going to uh, uh, enjoy the security of God. I don't want, I don't want to miss out when, when he says, blessed. Blessed deals with security, salvation deliverance not just a joyful feeling <laughs> but it deals with a deeper depth of that amen uh, uh an assurance uh, uh when uh, i'm blessed i got an assurance if i'm hungering and thirsty i got an assurance if i weep and mourn after sin i'm secure i got an assurance if i'm meek if i'm stable if i'm uh, uh being strong in the lord when you see that word meek, look, think of it as being strong in the Lord, not being dismayed, hallelujah, at what's going on around you. Thank you, Lord, not being frightened or intimidated. That's what the Bible, when it talks about meek, it means about holding your position while doing the will of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We got to hold our position. Hallelujah. While we're doing the will of God. Don't be moved. My God. Hallelujah. Don't be moved. Hallelujah. By, by the hand of the enemy. Thank you, Lord. Because you're secure. Because you're rooted. Because you're covered. Hallelujah. By the blood of Jesus. You're covered. Hallelujah. By the will of God. Now notice then what he said. He said, blessed uh, those that are secure uh, 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 are the merciful. For they shall obtain mercy. Merciful is an attribute of God. Mercy. God operates. He deals with us. Because of his tender mercy. God loves mercy so much, much that he named mercy, uh, he named some mercies after David. He called it the sure mercies of David. Hallelujah. My God. He loved David so much, he named mercy after David. To, to give us an illustration, to give us an illustration of what mercy truly is. We remember when David went into Bathsheba. And, and as he went into Bathsheba, thank you, Lord, he didn't show mercy to, to, to saw, uh, uh, her, her husband, Uriah, and he had him killed. Thank you, Lord, after he had found out that Bathsheba was pregnant. And, and he forgot about it. And then the prophet came to David and told David uh, a parable about a ewe lamb and a sheep. Uh, you can read the story, and, and uh, Uriah asked David, what shall be to the owner? Because he took the man's little ewe lamb. He took the man's little sheep. And David said, surely that man should be put to death. See, David stole a man's uh, wife, and he had that man put to death. Uh, uh, and this was that illustration of how he should have shown mercy. Mercy deals with a person that is caught in the act and you have all rights to put them to death, but you set them free. Hallelujah. And that's what, 
Uh, that's why God named sure mercies after David because he wanted us to connect it to an illustration of what true mercy is. David, when he found out that uh, God, that he had sinned against God, David repented. Hallelujah. And God punished him, but he didn't put him to death. He showed him mercy. When we, uh, 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 the Bible says that if we forgive, God is going to forgive us. That's a principle of the kingdom that shows you are saved, that shows you are righteous, hallelujah, before God. So, so when you show mercy to others, hallelujah, God will show you mercy. Hallelujah, and that's an attribute of the Lord. Now notice what he says. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall do what? Obtain mercy. If you show mercy, when you need mercy, God is going to show you mercy. Hallelujah. You need it. Yeah, glory. Hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. You need it. Notice verse 8. He says, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Those that, that purify their heart. Are you blessed if you, if you go after to purify your heart. Put away evil thoughts. Think of uh, 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 the way Philippians 4 and 8 tells you to think. Let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. When you do these things, you shall see God. Have an understanding of God. Hallelujah. You shall get deep revelations of God. Hallelujah. Because God dwells in your heart through the Holy Ghost by faith. Hallelujah. That's why. Hallelujah. God wants you to have a clean heart. And, and, a, and a pure heart. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Our prayer should be, Lord, cleanse my heart. Hey, hallelujah. Cleanse my mind. Thank you, Lord. My God, my God, I feel a revelation coming on. Sin is not the problem because Jesus overcame sin. Hey, well, what's the problem is, is what's in my heart. Hey, that's what holds me back. Hey, can I both shot? Or if that's what elevates me. Thank you, Lord. If my heart is right, hallelujah, my walk is going to be right. Hey, if my heart is not right, my walk is not going to be right. Hey, I, we manifest what is in our heart. Thank you, hallelujah. Hey, hallelujah. Sin is not the problem, my friend. Hey, hallelujah. Sin is not the issue, my friend. Hallelujah. The issue is, is what's in my heart. That's why he said, present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Be not conformed, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, huh? so that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. If you won't live right, you gotta have a right heart. Sin is not the problem. Sin is not the issue. Jesus overcame sin. Jesus gave us power over sin. We've got to let the Holy Ghost dwell in our heart. That's why when David sinned, he said, Lord, Created me a clean heart. Hallelujah. Oh, Hallelujah. We've got to ask the Lord. Lord created me a clean heart. Hey. And then he said. Renew a right spirit. And that spirit he's talking about. His attitude. Hey. Hallelujah. Lord. Lord change my attitude. Thank you Lord. My attitude. Thank you Lord. Is bothering me. It's keeping me from doing your will. Lord, 
give me a right attitude toward your righteousness, toward your holiness, toward Ask God to help you. Ask God to bless you today. Ask God to deliver you today. Ask God to strengthen you today. Ask God to move on you by faith today. Hey, come on, Shanda Labasha. Hey, come on, Shanda Labasha. Hey, come on, Shanda. Hallelujah. We all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Lord, renew my heart. Renew my mind. Renew my spirit. Hallelujah. So I can walk with you. Hey, come on, Shanda Labasha. Beg so I can understand you, Lord. Hallelujah. So my heart can be pure. So I can see you. Lord, I'm tired of seeing the trouble. Come on, Shanda Basha. Lord, I'm tired. I'm tired of seeing the rubber, the, the tribulation. I'm tired of seeing the old man. Lord, I want to see you. When I look in the mirror, I want to see you. And when I look in the prop, perfect law of liberty, I want to see you. Because we were created in his image and in his likeness. We should only see him. And that begins with your heart. Glory, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you praise in God, hallelujah, just hit it up in there. Hallelujah. Give God a praise in this atmosphere. The Holy Ghost is moving. The Holy Ghost is raining. Thank you, Lord Jesus. My God. Now notice what he said. My God, that come on, Shanda Labasha. Labasha. Hallelujah. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. When your heart's pure, you're going to see God. Labasha. You'll, under, you'll understand his ways. You won't physically see him, but you'll understand his ways. Hey, you'll understand his attributes. You'll understand his desires. You'll begin to understand his will. You'll understand his value. You'll understand his purpose. Hallelujah. You'll be transformed. You'll be renewed. Hallelujah. But it begins with your heart. The Bible says that it may be who Christ to suffer. Hallelujah, to die and to give his life as a ransom. So sin is not the problem. It's what's in our heart. Hallelujah, God is after your heart. Now, notice, notice what he says. He said, blessed are they that are persecuted for righteousness sake. For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thank you, Lord. My God, when people persecute you, notice, you got security. Huh? If you're being persecuted, for what? Righteousness sake. He says, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Notice, blessed are ye when men shall revile you, hey, say, persecute you, and say all manner of evil against you falsely for my name's sake. Notice what the scripture says. It tells you to rejoice and be exceedingly glad for great is your reward in heaven. For so persecuted they the prophets that were before you. My God, we certainly uh, praise God for this Bible study uh, on tonight. My soul, my soul, my soul, my soul was blessed. I, I hope your soul was blessed with this Bible study on tonight. We just went over the Beatitudes. Thank you, Lord. Next week, we'll fall into uh, the purpose of the Beatitudes of what we should be reflecting and how we should be influencing. We certainly do thank God for each of you that have tuned in on tonight. 
Hallelujah. God is a good God. Hey, glory. Come on, just clap your hands and give God a praise. God is a good God. Uh, just write it in the comment section that God is a good God. Uh, and he's worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. He's worthy. So let us go before the Lord. Gracious Father, in the name of Jesus, bless each and every soul uh, under the sound of my voice. Bless each and every one that is tuned in and those that are yet to be tuned in. We pray, Lord, that you bless them and strengthen them. Give them grace. Give them overcoming power. Grab them that anointing. Hallelujah. And that's straight from above. Father, we thank you. We give you glory and honor. We praise you in Jesus' name. Tune back in with us on Sunday at 10 a.m. Hallelujah for our morning. Oh, let me back up. Tune back in. We're going to restart our, our, our Bible uh, Sunday school. Tune back in with us 9 o'clock on Sunday. Hallelujah from 9 to 9.45 Bible study, Sunday school. And then at 10 o'clock, our morning worship. We thank God for you, and may heaven smile upon you. In Jesus' name, don't forget to give through Tidely, our Dropbox, hallelujah, or mail it to Christian Ministries of the Apostolic Faith Church, 501 West 31st. In Jesus' name, if this ministry has blessed you, you ought to bless the Lord. We pray uh, Jesus' strength in you. In Jesus' name, amen.